Good morning, viewers. You are welcome once again in our today's daily Dynamite, a huge devotional manual, Church of Nigeria, on this day, 31st of October, 2023. Let us pray. Thou whose almighty word, chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Lord King of Glory, this is the day which you have made, and we all shall rejoice in it. We are so grateful for the opportunity given to us to, to be alive today in the land of the living. Lord, as we are about to digest your word, the entrance of your word speaketh light. Lord, by your mercy, speak to us in the language we are going to understand. That at the end, we shall see all cause to glorify your name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, because we know you are with us. In Jesus' most holy, wonderful name we pray. Amen. I welcome you once again in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, our text is going to, to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Because we stopped in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. So today we are going to continue from 15. And I read 1 Timothy chapter 1, reading from verse 15. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ, might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them, you may fight a good fight, holding on to the faith and a good conscience. Some have rejected these, and so have shipwrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. I urge you then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intersection, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness this is the very good this is good and pleases god our savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth verse 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and men and the man christ jesus this is the word of the lord thanks be to god our anchor verse we we'll start from chapter 2, 1 to 4. I urge you then, first of all, that request prayers, that, that request prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is the good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. This morning we have a wonderful topic to digest. Our topic this morning is love. Permit me to give you this sweet song that we used to sing in our ACM. And it goes like this. Behold the manner of love the father has best on his children. Behold the manner of love. The father has best on his children. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Let me tell you, if you don't understand God's love, Christianity is not going to make sense to you. 
Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us something that even that demonstrates his own love for us. In this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The love I am talking about is not this type of sexual immorality that is going on in this our generation. That is not the love I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the love where you begin to maneuver just to deceive somebody and claiming you love the person. That is lost. It is not love. In Oxford Dictionary, in Oxford Dictionary it tells us that love is, an, is a, 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 an intense feeling of deep affection. It is because of this deep affection that God has for us, that was why he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Sex is very rampant in this our generation. Even some mothers also encourage their girls to go and sleep with men just because of love, because of the hardship in our country. And then they are thinking that this thing is love. It is not love. It is loss. And it will lead you to hellfire. Let me tell you, if you fail to embrace God's love, you will miss this blessed hope we are talking about. Let me tell you, that's why the Bible tells us in John 3 verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to tell you this morning, that God still loves you. And this morning is an opportunity for you to come back home. Where we read in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15a, it says, a trustworthy statement. Here is a trustworthy statement that deserves full acceptance. This word, this statement needs to encourage you it is the statement that will encourage, it is this love that will encourage you. That even when things fall apart, it is the word of God that will still hold you. Even when things fall apart, the word of God will not fail you. That's why Paul says, here is a trustworthy statement that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus Christ died because of you. Jesus Christ came to this world to die because of, he died because of you and I. Now Paul used himself as a case study to address with the youth that if God can show him mercy in verse 16, if God can show him mercy, what makes you think that God cannot show you mercy? Let me tell you, God loves you so much. No matter what you have done in the past, no matter the atrocities you have committed in the past, the love of God is still fresh. The love of God is still real. No matter the things you have done, I want to tell you, my fellow youths, Paul used himself as a case study. We all know the life of Paul. He was a blasphemer. He killed the Christians. He did so many things, but God showed him love. Another person that I will use to tell you, to give you an example, is the person standing in front of you. I know who I was back then in the university. We covered ourselves under the umbrella of Kegites, but we know who we are. But today, here am I, telling you that all these things are vanity. Vanity upon vanity, equals to vanity. I want to tell you that God still loves you. God still loves you. Because he doesn't want you to perish. That is why St. Paul is telling us that even he himself, he said, for that very reason, I will show mercy. God will show you mercy. God must surely, God must surely show you mercy. The Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal life. All you need is to believe. It is an act of love that made Paul to remind Timothy of the prophecy that was hanging over his shoulder. Let me tell you, my fellow youth, do you know that there is a prophecy hanging on your shoulder? Yes. You did not come to, the, you did not come to this world by an accident. No. You are not here by emergency. There is a purpose. And God, because it is because of the love of God, 
that makes you to be here. And God is expecting you to demonstrate it. God is expecting you to carry this message and share to our fellow youths. That is the law of God is looking at our, that is the law of God is looking in our hands. It is an act of love that made Paul to remind Timothy as a youth, we need to show love to our fellow youths that are going astray. We need to show love to our youths, our fellow youths that are backsliding. Not when you see your fellow youths, you start to, you start to uh, 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 say negative things about the person. No. You need to call the person to order. You need to preach to the person. You need to show love to that person. Behold the manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. I want to tell you, my fellow youths, the content for the faith, which is the truth of our faith, we can see it in Jude chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. But I want to tell you that it is better for you to embrace this love. Now is the available time. Now is the available time. Tomorrow might be too late. In verse 19, Paul is also reminding us that in this fight, our personal faith is absolutely essential. The point here is the confidence of faith and perseverance in God's faithfulness. And even when the fight is very fierce, hold on, God must surely give you hope. Now let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the love of God is real. No matter what you are seeing around you, God still loves you. No matter the situation, no matter where you have been to, you need to understand this love very well. You need to understand this love I am talking about. If you go to our ancient and modern 325, it says something very there, ancient and modern 325. It's talking about the type of heart we need to have. The type of love we need to have because it is God that gave us that privilege for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but he will have everlasting life. You need to have this heart. This heart that can be able to demonstrate the love of God to the fellow youth. I want to encourage you this morning that now is the available time tomorrow might be too late now we are living the love of god is real now we are living the love of god is real behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us reason is that we should be called the sons of god there are so many things that can hinder this god's love upon you if you read second timothy chapter 2 verse 23 it says Flee from evil desires. These are the things that can hinder you. This verse 23. These are the things that can hinder you. But foolish and only questions avoid snow and they and that they go gender strifes. Let me tell you, flee from evil desires. It is those evil friends that will lead you astray. And there are things we can achieve through prayers in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Number one is peaceful life. Peaceful lives. Quiet life. Godliness and holiness. Paul was charging Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2. He said, I urge you then, first of all, that request prayers, intersection and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Do not segregate. Pray for everybody. Pray for your brothers. Pray for your sisters. Pray for those in authority. That is how you are going to show them love. Not all this type of love we are seeing in our generation. Not all this type of love we are seeing among the, some of the youths. Because I believe it's not everybody. So I am pleading with you whatever you are doing that is not in line with the plans of god towards your life the time is now available for you to come back home the time is available for you to come back home do you know that your prayer can save your family do you know that through your prayers your family can be delivered that is how you show love to them that is how you show love to to your fellow youths 
That is how you show love to your generation. Pray for them. A lot of things are happening this time around. So many terrible things are going on. But it is the love of God. It is the love of God that supersedes every other thing. Of a truth, you will face so many temptations. Of a truth, you will face so many tribulations. Of a truth, you will face so many trials. But it is the love of God that can keep you going in this life. You don't limit your prayers to yourself. You can extend it to others. That your friend that is a thief, halot, smoking, a drug addict, show them love by praying for them. That is what you are going to do. It is the desire of God that all men should be saved. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. That is the love we are talking about. So that you will be called a son of the sons and daughters of the living God. That is the best love you can ever receive in this life. Do you love God? Now is the time to return. Now is the time to embrace Him. He is missing you and He loves you. And He wants to hold you. So that on, that, on the last day, all of us will be there on that resurrection morning. Let us go back to our memory verse, our anchor verse. In verse 2, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Therefore, I exalt first of all that all supplications, prayers, intersection, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Food for thought. No one can love you more than God. He is love. Nobody can love you more than God. Even your parents, even your wife, even your siblings cannot love you more than God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you because of the grace and opportunity given to us to hear your word. Lord, we pray that your word will be a transformation in our lives and not just an information. We commit the rest of the day into your hands. Guide us and protect us. In Jesus' most holy, wonderful name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on The Daily Dynamite.